That is my take on a tune called The Primrose Lass, which I played with my friend Josh when he and I did a flute baron duet uh, a couple weeks ago, I think. There's a link to that. Check it out if you're so inclined. You want to hear it rather well accompanied on the drum. But I thought it might make a cool tune to break down because it's a short reel. Um, it's half as long as a standard reel, um, so there's not a ton of notes to learn, which is kind of cool, and it's got a lot of range, so it's good practice. It gets to make sure you're, you're, you're comfortable between the two octaves. A part starts like this. It's basically starting on the B, going all the way down and coming back. You can think of it that way. I'll run that phrase again. Second phrase is almost identical, just the last few notes are a little bit different. And that's just the last note. It ends on a G instead of ending on the A. So, once more. This video is, interestingly enough, sponsored by me, sort of. I have merch. Check it out. I've actually got my own merch. I drew this logo a while back, and I thought it'd look cool in a t-shirt. So now I've got it, and it's available for sale. I'm also giving one of these away. So if you want, there's a contest. Uh, details are down below. More details at the end of the video. Uh, but if you want, get in on this, and if you win it, I'll ship one to you. You know, if you're so inclined. Uh, all right, back to the video. And just for kicks, I'm going to run it all the way through, all together. Another way to finish up the ending there. So again, it's very repetitive. There's really only a couple of bars that are different once you break it down that way. So hopefully it'll be easy enough to pick up. The B part is a little bit trickier um, in that it jumps around a lot more. Um, there's probably more notes, but really there's some repetitive phrases as well. It also goes up in the higher octave. Keep that in mind when you're playing. If you want to save your eardrums, you're more than welcome to drop it down the octave. I'm going to play it up high just so you know what the notes are. So that first section is really just an arpeggio kind of thing. A couple of notes back to back. Second bit here. Hopefully you're getting a similar vibe to the A part, because the A part finished up its first half landing that same way. Once again then. This next section is repeat of the first. And then just like the A part, the final section is a little bit different. all the way up to that G, and then back down. So once more. So whole B part, all the way through. Hopefully you can play along. playing the tune up-tempo with all the ornaments, you'd play A-A-B-B, but it's still a short reel. It's the, each section is still pretty short, so hopefully you're able to pick those up. The ornaments are where this tune, I think, really shine, particularly in that B part with all those arpeggios, which we'll get to in a second. Let's start with the A part, though, first of all. I like to start with a slide. That's your basic melody. Just the B kind of calls out for it, to my ear anyway. Kind of add that if you need to do a little extra tap. Sometimes I'll do that. So you can do a roll on the G. Nice little cut there. Or if you wanted to get fancy, 
I do that sort of double tappy thing as I land, going from the B to the A. And it has a neat effect because it accents a strange beat, I think. Um, and it's subtle, you know, to my ear anyway. And again, roll on G, and then as you go from the G to the E, I'll do that same kind of double tap. If I do it in the first note, I'll do it on the second note. Sort of a mirroring thing. So as I go G to E, land, land on that E, and then pop that top finger off. Same exact movement as I did up here. And then coming up the scale, just a cut on the B, and then a tap on the A. That's usually all I'll do with that. And then finishing the phrase with the short roll. Has a nice punchy kind of effect. The B part is cool because we get to work in a lot of triplets. And if you've followed this channel, you know I probably talk a lot about that. So to do that, that's the phrase that I would do. You hear that kind of extra loud G note in there, that little extra pop as you go from B to C natural. You're sort of dragging this top finger rather than making a nice clean transition from B to C natural, nice and smooth. You're accidentally leaving that extra finger there. And it has a cool effect, kind of like you're getting a grace note for free without having to do a whole lot of thinking about it. At least that's how it is for me. It's sort of just second nature at this point to make that thing pop. And then of course play the D. But if you do it up tempo, uh, you're not hearing the G specifically. So in this case, it'd be... It's just a nice little popping effect. And then from there, usually cutting that top G, it's so sharp and kind of brittly sounding, it makes it sound kind of neat that way. Short roll to finish the phrase on the A, and then that thing just repeats again. So I'm cutting the same G the second time as I go up that scale. Right, same way. I've been finishing it going up the scale. Again, the triplet that we just did, I do the same thing there. Um, and you can either roll that top G or just do kind of a short cut. That's one of those where in the upper octave, it depends on how confident you are in your ability to make those cuts and how confident you are in your whistle that it won't crack because the upper octave can get a little squirrely sometimes. So if you're confident with it, you can even cut that high A. That little thing to finish up going from a C natural to a B, I've demonstrated it from a C sharp to a B, uh, from a B to a C sharp, the other way around, but that's one of those kind of stupid whistle tricks that I like. It's just a nice effect, a nice sound. So as I play the C natural, I come off it with the tongue into a slide. So I'm sliding from sort of an A to a B. So the whole thing in slow motion. And that's how I would do it. That's where I would tongue in between each note in that case, which I don't do a lot of, but that little phrase and coming from a C natural to a B, just the physics of the instrument. Again, stupid whistle tricks. I think it's kind of cool. That's how I play this tune. I'm gonna link a version down below, which is the first version I ever heard of this one. It's a completely different setting and it's awesome. Um, but definitely check that out. I learned this version from a friend of mine here in Nashville and it's the more standard setting the one that we played today, but check out that other one, which is by a group called Solus. It's just really cool. And it's great flute playing by Seamus Egan. So what do you guys think of this one? You like it? I think it's a cool tune. Let me know what y'all think down below. Uh, I will see y'all in the next one. Oh, giveaway time. Yeah, we're giving away this t-shirt. So if you want to get on board with this thing, then what you need to do is one, give me the like, give me the subscribe, usual deal. And I always ask people to put in a comment. So what are we looking for this time? It's a question that I don't think I've ever asked before. How did you get started playing the whistle? Why this? What did you hear first? What got you into this? Whether it's Irish music, whether it's uh, video games, whether it's whatever it may be. I'm just curious what got you started playing? Why'd you pick this instrument instead of the millions of other instruments that are out there, the other options? So let me know, I'm just curious. Uh, and then I'll send you this t-shirt. 
if you guys just want to buy one, hey, that'd be awesome. Uh, there's a thing in the store somewhere down here above my channel. Click on the channel. It's in the store. Cool. Uh, also got t-shirts on Patreon. I've got a different t-shirt, like an exclusive t-shirt, because that's the world we live in, I guess. And got to pay the bills somehow. So anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you all in the next one, guys. Cheers.